Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Something God gave me this morning uh, that I feel I should share. When you go to the court, you have a case. You need a reference. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. You talk about the criminal um, book. I don't know how they call it. Yeah. Hallelujah. You point to what has been agreed by everyone. So according to this article, I'm not guilty. Then I should be free. For us Christians, we point to the Bible. Amen? We point to the Bible. This morning, I still see people suffering in the body. Suffering mentally. But trying their best. Pushing, trying their best. Hallelujah. To defend your case. Act chapter 2, verse 24. Amen? Is what you're going to walk with. That says, I'm going to read for you. But God raised, raised him up, having released him from the pains of death, because it was not possible for him to be held in its power. Amen. Death could not hold him down. Amen. For the problems that you have, for your situation that you have, this morning, God is reminding you, death could not hold him down. Amen. Your situation was also defeated. Yes, he went down. Listen, when Jesus went down, he was already broken physically in all ways. He, he was dead. Hallelujah. But even in that situation, death was in, incapable of keeping his grip on him. He defeated what is defeating you today. Hallelujah. He defeated what is bugging you today. Amen. 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 In defending your case when you're praying, refer to the Bible. Amen. That's your reference. Yes, it's painful, but that pain could not hold him down. It could be cancer or mental disease or any other problem, but that one too could not hold him down. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This it's something I want everyone to walk. When you walk out of here, you have it in you. Death could not hold him down. So I am victorious. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Today we're going to talk about the God of Jacob. Amen. Amen. Let me read quickly. Matthew chapter 22, verse 31 to 33. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of dead, but the God of the living. God is the God of living. Yes. When you read this, you wonder, why, what, what kind of person is Abraham? Why did not God say, I'm the God of Elijah? I'm the God of David? Or say, I'm the, the God of Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham? God start by Abraham. Therefore, Abraham is a very important person. Brothers and sisters, we are now going through all the details to understand today why God started with Abraham. But what I can tell you today, Abraham was a giant in faith. A giant. He was uncommon and extraordinary person. Probably that's the reason God is saying, I am the God of Abraham. Hallelujah. That means God is the God of extraordinary and outstanding people. Amen. 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 But thank God, he is not only the God of Abraham, he is as well the God of Israel, uh, Isaac. Hallelujah. If it was only the God of Abraham, oh, many of us would be disappointed. Amen. Because none of us, to my knowledge, is extraordinary. Maybe it's myself. I am not extraordinary. I am not an outstanding person. So I would be disappointed if God was only the God of Abraham. Am I the only one person? Hallelujah. Please respond to me. Amen. Amen. Just be honest. Amen. <laughs> the Bible says God was also God of Isaac. 
Isaac was an ordinary person. He was not extraordinary. He was just humble. He was not evil. He was just an ordinary person. So we learn from there that God is the God of ordinary people as well. Thank God you are a God of ordinary people. Hallelujah. Because I am not extraordinary. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I know the temperature outside is going down. Even this morning it was raining. Amen? But it's not raining here. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So God is saying, I am the God of extraordinary people, but I am the God of ordinary people as well. Thank God for that. Thank God for Isaac. Because Abraham's standard is way too high for me. For you, I don't know, but for me, it's way too high. However, God is not only God of extraordinary people or only God of ordinary people. He is also God of evil people, evil men. He is also God of people who are not perfect. They are not extraordinary. They are not ordinary. So they are some, something under. Hallelujah. They, they are just uh, not perfect. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I understand your excitement. <laughs> eh? <laughs> you counted yourself out of the extraordinary. And out of the ordinary. We're coming to the imperfect people. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I understand. I should have started by that. I apologize. <laughs> Amen. God is a God of uh, all the people who are not, who don't have everything all together. Amen. That's the reason God is saying, I am the God of Jacob. Hallelujah. Amen. All the robbers, the thieves, the prostitutes, the, the invaders, everything you can imagine. God is the God as well. Amen. I do not know what category you belong to. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't want to guess. Amen. Amen. I'm going to leave that to you. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. But I'm here to tell you, God is your God too. Amen. Sometimes because of our past, because of what we went through, because of what we have done in the past, we carry on this guilty. It stays there. We may say we are saved. We may say um, my two legs are already in heaven, but your mind is saying, buddy, May I rem remind you what you have done just last week? Amen. Amen. I'm here to encourage someone who feels guilty because of your past. Yes. Maybe your life did not go as planned. At some point, your life was under, uh, out of control and you feel guilty. Hallelujah. I'm here to encourage someone I don't know if that person is on this side, this side, this side, or the other side. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you are not proud of your accomplishments. You have accomplished things, but you are not totally proud of everything you have done so far. Hallelujah. Maybe it's not you. It's your sons of your daughters. They do not turn into something you wanted, you wished, or even what you prayed for. Hallelujah. That's the reason I'm here today. Let's go to chapter, John chapter 8, starting from verse 3. It says here, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? Hallelujah. They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing Jesus. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stopped down and he wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away 
one at a time. They are all the ones first until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Hallelujah. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir. Then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, Go now and quit your life of sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a story of a woman who fell into adultery. And Jesus is saying this morning, failure is not final. All these people, they came with stones and they were pushing this woman who was already guilty. She had accepted everything. She was ready to die. Hallelujah. Everyone with his stone. But they, they, they wanted to go through Jesus. Because for them, Jesus was making noise. Jesus was changing the rules. And then they said, it says in the law of Moses, such women, we have to put him to, 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 to death. What do you say? Hallelujah. They all had stones in their hands. And Jesus challenged them. If you, are not, you have never sinned, be first to throw your stone. Before you know, nobody was there. This woman, I'm not saying she did not sin. She sinned. But God was God of Jacob as well. And God was her God as well. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever you went through, all the failures and everything that did not go well in your past. Jesus this morning is saying that was not final. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For God, it was not a failure. It was just a setback. Hallelujah. Amen. For God to use it as a setup to propel you into your destiny. Amen. This woman had a destiny. She was about to be stoned. She was about to be killed. Hallelujah. But she had a destiny. Her destiny was not to be stoned. Amen. 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 Jesus used that opportunity to wake up something in her. For me, it was like a setup. She could have said to Jesus, you got me. Hallelujah. She was now completely rehabilitated. She was now accepted. The sinners were gone. Hallelujah. One by one by one by one. Now her sins were for forgotten. She was now a new person. Will you feel the same this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Will you feel the same this morning? Yes. I don't know what you went through. Hallelujah. But by looking at you, I can get some of the things. Hallelujah. Hmm? Because you look like me sometimes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just sometimes. Yes. Amen. Yes. But we have been rehabilitated. Yes. We are new people. Yes. Our sins are gone. Yes. Jesus himself gave his, his, his life. For you and me to live and live eternally. Amen. So don't live condemned all your entire life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is saying this morning, your failures did not kill you. Yes, it did not probably go well in your life, but you are still alive. So do not dwell on them because they did not kill you. You're still here. You're still alive. Move on with your life. I say, move on. Amen. Move on. Amen. The poor lady was about to be stoned. And everyone had prepared maybe a few stones. Some had stones in their pockets. Because maybe one stone was not enough. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The problem here is the lady. Did you ever hear her say anything? Hmm? No. Nothing. Nothing. Until Jesus asked, where are they? So, oh, they are all gone. Hallelujah. She was ready to die. She could not do anything. Situation condemned her. People condemned her. She was already guilty. She felt rejected by everyone. Her self-esteem was already dead and buried, six feet under. Hallelujah. Her proud of her past accomplishment was already dead. She did not just appear. She had a family. 
She has done things. She has accomplished things. But because people made her guilty, did not give her even a chance. Hallelujah. So she was already condemned by life, by circumstances, by people. Her self-esteem buried. Her proud buried. Hallelujah. Am I talking to a person here? Yes. You used to be somebody. Yes. You used to accomplish things. And today, you, where is your proud, your pride? Yeah. Buried. Six feet under. Because of people talking, because of circumstances of life. Hallelujah. This lady was already, was ready to be stoned. She was ready to die. She had accepted her fate. Hallelujah. Amen. My problem is not this lady. My problem is you. What about you? Yes. What about you? What is dead in your life? Hmm? I saw spiritually people anxious, stressed, completely depressed. One minute you are okay. The other minute you are not. Hallelujah. A little tingling here. Oh, it's my heart. I think it's my heart. Brother, the tingling is down there. The heart is up here. Your heart has nothing to do with that. Hallelujah. Maybe you should remove just your shoe and you'll be fine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I told you the story of a lady who, work, who worked with me some 15 years ago. She knew I was a spiritual man. She knew I had influence in her. Sometimes I prayed for her at work. Amen. She was a Christian. And then one day I had left the company. She sent me an email saying, John, that's how she called me. I think I have a problem. It's my heart. I said, what is happening with your heart? I don't know. Sometimes I have the impression it's my heart. I need to go see a doctor. Pray for me. Because next week I will go see a doctor. I am sure it's my heart. Because in my family, it's always our hearts. Hallelujah. Jesus. I prayed for her, definitely. And I told her, it's not your heart. It's your mind. You think too much. Every tiny little thing is my heart. Leave your heart alone. She went to see a doctor. Before even she left the hospital, she had sent me an email again. She said, my heart is fine. I knew her heart was fine. It's just her mind, hallelujah. Don't watch TV too much. Amen, hallelujah. Hey, a little problem here and there. Oh, it's, it's probably cancer. It's running in our families. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know what is dead in you. You probably have something that is dead in you. Hallelujah. But God is saying, whatever is dead in you should be alive. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm saying it should be alive. Yeah. It should be alive. Yeah. I command life in your situation. Yeah. I don't care what is dead. Jesus. It could be your mind. It could be something serious. I don't care. But I command life in whatever is dead. Hallelujah. Life in your situation. Yeah. Ah. Life in your situation. Yeah. Some people invested money, hallelujah, with a big hope of a return. And I'm one of them, hallelujah, and then my money is gone. But if you have invested money with an expectation of a return, I commend life in your financial situation. Life in your financial situation. Some years ago, I invested money, and I started looking how my money was going down. And then it down, and then down. I said, okay, no, 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 no. After two weeks, I called the guy. I need my money back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lack of faith. I did not pray enough. My eyes were not on God. My eyes on the money. Jesus. And then my money was going down, man. It was probably a dollar here and there. But that speed was way too high for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the number has six zeros and then after a month it's four, yeah, 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 yeah. Give me my money back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I commend life in your financial situation. Life in your financial situation. 
You have been receiving consistent bad reports from doctors. Hallelujah. They have been issued them one by one by one. Today you change, you go to another person. The same medical report. Hallelujah. Either yourself or your loved ones. You are desperate. Hallelujah. Let me remind you this morning. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. I declare that nothing should be dead in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Anything dead should not dwell in your body. Hallelujah. Amen. Starting from here to the bottom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I decree that all those medical reports, even those coming from so-called specialists, hallelujah, they have no longer any jurisdiction in your body. Nothing to claim, hallelujah. Let doctors do their job and they do an awesome job. Hallelujah. But we're presenting the case to a higher court. Hallelujah. They may decide from what they can see with their eyes, but God will decide from what they cannot see with their eyes. Hallelujah. High court, hallelujah. High court, amen. amen. I declare with enthusiasm, physically, you will live, you will not die. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. You will live and you will not die. Amen. Financially, you will land, but you will not borrow. Amen. No borrowing, amen. no credit card after line of credit, amen. after loan. You will not die, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spiritually, you will be blessed. And you will have dreams and visions. Dreams and visions. Hallelujah. Emotionally, God says, this morning, the peace I give you is different from the one from the world. Hallelujah. God is saying spiritually, the peace that I'm giving you, it is different from the other peace. From the other peace that comes from the world. In the morning, you are peaceful. At noon, you are not peaceful anymore. No, that's not the peace we want. I command the other peace in the name of Jesus. Sir. Because that peace, that peace is not temporary. It's a permanent peace. Hallelujah. So this morning, receive your peace. Receive God's peace. Receive God's joy. Hallelujah. God's joy. Receive God's financial blessings. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let the blood of Jesus that was shed at the cross for you to have life and love abundantly invade you. Yes. Invade, miraculously repairs you. Yes. Hallelujah. Restores whatever that has been broken in you. Rejuvenates you. You felt old in the morning. By noontime, oh my goodness, you're jumping all over the place. Life and life abundantly has kicked in. Kicked in. Hallelujah. Let the peace that comes from Jesus, uh, the, the, the blood that was shed at the cross, confuses doubters, confuses unbelievers, confuses accountants and financial planners, confuses them. Instead of decreasing, uh, your money will increase. Hallelujah. Increase. Hallelujah. Increase in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's come to, back to Abraham. I was feeling something spiritually. Hallelujah. In the book of Genesis, chapter 11. We're not going to read that. It does say that Abraham's dad, Terah, was about 70 years old when he had three sons. Abraham and his two other son, uh, brothers. And God uh, caused him to move from the city where he was living, to go to Canaan, which is, we can say, the promised land. Hallelujah. But his, one of his sons died. But he moved anyways. When he got halfway, he did not get where he was going. He settled down there. We do not know really the reason. We don't know what happened. But actually, we do know. His son died. Hallelujah. He was broken. It's probably something related to that death that removed his passion. He did not make it to the destination. He stopped in Haran and he stayed there. Hallelujah. And he died there. He was over 200 years when he died and he died there. Hallelujah. I have preached on this 
uh, back then. But today, I'm saying this. Do not let circumstances of your life, of your loved one, drive your own life. Amen. Do not. Yes. Do not. God created you to go from point A to point Z. Yes. Yes. Do not stop halfway. Amen. Things will happen. Circumstances will happen. But do not let them drive your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The death of the son changed completely his life. He's, he was not that passion anymore. Hallelujah. I can say that because at the time he buried his son, his own desire to fulfill his mission, his desire to keep moving forward, his desire to touch and change things around was buried at the same time. Hallelujah. Coming to us, many of us react the same. Many of us live exactly the same situation. Something happened in your life, and all of a sudden, your life stops. It can happen slowly, 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 but it will happen eventually if you are not aware of that. You give up on everything. Let me tell you, the road that leads to the promised land is always full of bad surprises. Always. Remember the story of Joseph I always talk about. Hallelujah. He had to go through the pit, the prison. He was slave and all kinds of accusations. But the difference between Joseph and most of us, Joseph did not blame his dad. He did not even blame his brothers who put him down there and who sold him. Hallelujah. He did not blame any of them. I want to say this respectively. Hell, amen. And with much love, unfair situations has happened, have happened, and will happen always. Stop blaming your dad. Stop blaming your mom for something that has happened 15 years ago. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not asking you to blame yourself. It has happened it belongs to the past. I'm here to tell you this morning, turn the page. Jesus. Turn the page. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn the page. Yes. Stop blaming your parents for something they did not do or something they did but they should not do some 20 years ago. Free yourself from that. Free yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Stop blaming this boyfriend who dumped you like, like a garbage. Oh, hallelujah. Some 10 years ago. Free him. Free yourself. Amen. Forget what happened. Forgive him so you will free. Position yourself for new blessings. Position yourself for better blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I know you invested too much in this marriage. Everything that you had. All your strength. Hallelujah. But she left. Oh, he left. Hallelujah. And it has happened many years ago. And that fact killed your enthusiasm. Killed your desire to live, to give, and even to serve. Hallelujah. Every time you want to do something, that thing is like, has a grip on you like this. You cannot move forward. Your passion is gone. It has happened. Let God use it as a setup. To propel you into your destiny. You have a destiny. Whatever has happened has a meaning for you. Connect with God to reveal that meaning and then to switch you a different way. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are still alive. You are not dead. Since this person abused you. Since this marriage was terminated abruptly. Against your own will. Many people were looking up to you. You were an example. But not anymore. This situation killed the essence of who you are. Ten years ago. Hallelujah. Some days you want to even end your life. 
because of something that has happened. I remember this lady who testified some, some years ago here, said, my entire family was killed in front of me during genocide in Africa. And then some, sometimes I wonder, why am I still alive? Why me? Where is my mama? And that has happened 20 years ago. She did everything to die. She will see vehicles coming. She will run just for vehicles to, to, to uh, hit her. Nothing has happened. Everyone will stop. And then she's still alive. And that drives her crazy again. Hallelujah. I know it's difficult. I'm coming from there too. And I say this respectively. Uh, respect, respectively. It has already happened. Hallelujah. Let it go. Move on. God is trying to use you where he's supposed to bring you. He will use that experience to accomplish your destiny. Cut that tire today. Cut it in the name of Jesus. Just cut it. Hallelujah. Cut it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just feel the heaviness here this morning. By the power that has been invested to me. I invest in you. Joseph's strength. Joseph's perseverance when he was in the pit. Joseph's focus and this never give up attitude he had. In Jesus' name. In Jesus, you will do more than Joseph, hallelujah. More than Joseph. Despite what you're going through still today. Hallelujah. Whatever your enemy was able to, to kill. I command it to come back to life in Jesus' name. Amen. To come back to, to life in Jesus' name. Amen. Cemeteries are full of people. Full of people. Who unfortunately listened to... The, I'm not saying we're not going to die. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying it's full of people who listened too much to the lies of the enemy. You know, you got raped when you were seven. You know, you killed your brother by accident, but you did kill, you killed. You know, you killed this baby, you killed the baby, you killed, you killed. You were guilty, you were guilty. Those things were talking to them, talking, and then it becomes like you're too loud. They become impossible to do anything, hallelujah. These people were smart, were intelligent, we're passionate, we're full of life. We're de destined to do something, to accomplish something. Yes. Hallelujah. But whatever happened, stop them. Stop the dreaming. Stop the accomplishment. Stop everything. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of us are dead like 10 years ago. Jesus. When an event happened, that was the, the end of their life. They are still here. Just doing their time, like when you're in prison, waiting to die. The people in the cemetery, many of them lived that way. They had passion. They had a destiny. They had something they were supposed to do. But the enemy was talking to them too much. Too much. They did not connect to God to be free. And they did not accomplish what they were supposed to accomplish. Because of the lies of the enemy. I don't want that to happen to you. Amen. Hey, hallelujah. My mission is to free you. Amen. Free. Amen. Cut all the chains, hallelujah. You are free to accomplish what God has Amen. purposely Amen. done for you. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, let me tell you that what is in you is greater than what is in the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. May I say, may your, your dreams come to life. Hallelujah. That passion that you had and that is gone because you lost your job, you lost your fiancé, you had a car accident or something happened and the passion is gone. I command it to come to life, Amen. to be resurrected again. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning I'm saying you will overcome your fear. Amen. You will overcome your fear. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' name. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7 says, May God bless you with his peace that no one can com completely comprehend. May his peace control the way you think and the way you feel in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
This is so good. May God bless you with his peace. His peace is something that no one is able to comprehend. No one is able to understand. Hallelujah. I don't want to go back to my story, but I remember when we escaped everything we went through, and then we, we, we got here in Canada, and then I went to, um, I was living in Montreal, and then I just continued my life. And then a person who knew a little bit asked me, how do you do? I don't understand. How can you just move, move on with your life? If I were you, I would be cutting myself and stuff like that. It's because I have a peace. A peace that nobody can comprehend. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, you have the same peace in you. Amen. You have the same peace in you. You just have to tap into it. You will have it. Circumstances around you should not be able to control you. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, God this morning is saying, I am the God of Abraham, a man of faith, an obedient person. Hallelujah. Amen. God was pleased by Abraham. And it totally makes sense that God says, I'm the God of Abraham. Isaac was a child of promise from God, who was Abraham's best friend. Hallelujah. Few people, God says, it's my friend. But he said, Abraham is my friend. And Isaac was a combination of Abraham's faith, patience, especially obedience, and trust in God. And it makes sense for me, for God to say, I'm the God of Isaac. Hallelujah. What does not make sense to me is I am the God of Jacob. Hallelujah. Because Jacob <laughs> was everything. He was a con artist. He was a liar. He was a manipulator. Even his name means deceiver. Hallelujah. He fooled his dad, Isaac. Abraham is Isaac's dad, and Isaac is Jacob's dad. Hallelujah. And he fooled his dad. He pretended to be the oldest because Isaac was getting old. He could not see anymore. He fooled his dad. Amen? Yeah. And he, he fooled his brother Esau as, as well because he took his place. And then he got the blessing of the firstborn, which is always double portion. The second is like a third of Two-thirds goes to the first one and one-third to, to the second one. So he, he took the blessings of the firstborn. Hallelujah. That's the guy I'm talking about. Hallelujah. But regardless of that, hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes. Oh, connect, my brothers and sisters. Regardless of that, God rehabilitated him. God even changed his name from Jacob to Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. Which means God will prevail. Hallelujah. Amen. Here is my focus today. The focus of my preaching today. God does not say, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's written everywhere. God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and the cheater, and the robber, and the guy who fooled everyone around. Hallelujah. The God of Jacob. Can you relate to Jacob? I know I do. You probably relate to Abraham. Praise the Lord for you. I'm really happy for you. But for, my, for me, and probably some members of my family, we relate to Jacob. Hallelujah. And God is saying this morning, I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. And I'm also the God of Jacob. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am the God of sinners. Yes. I am the God of imperfect people. Yes. Do we have some imperfect people here? Yes. God is saying, I am your God. Hallelujah. Yes. God is God of uh, cheaters. I know we don't have anybody here, but God is God of cheaters. Hallelujah. The people who commit adultery. The, meet, the people who committed abortion, 
God is saying, I am your God, and I love you. Amen. Hallelujah. I love you. God is the God of people who failed miserably in their life. You failed miserably in your life, and God is saying, I am your God. Amen. I remember a couple that we had in the church, the, 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 the husband passed. He was one of our teachers, a person very loved by kids. Hallelujah. We called him Mr. B because his name was just too complicated to read. Amen. Branson, Stan, Einstein. I don't know. Sometimes I called him Einstein. Amen. And he told me one day, between me and my wife, we have seven marriages combined together. I got married three times. She got married four times. And he passed. And then the wife got married again. So that, that is five times. So together they have like eight. Hallelujah. You think you failed miserably, but God loves you. Amen. God loves you. At the cross, before he was crucified, there was another person there. That person deserved to be crucified according to people, but not according to God. Amen. Not according to God. Hallelujah. Let people condemn you. They know nothing. They are hiding their sins. Hallelujah. Your sin is just not visible. Yes. Hallelujah. The other person, the sin was known, yes. proved, yes. it was visible, yes. no question. And that's the reason they wanted to kill him. Yes. Even the person who wanted to kill him had full of sins, yes. but no one knew about. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus. If you failed miserably, let me tell you, it is not by power, it is not by might, but it is by the spirit of the living God. Yes. Hallelujah. The Bible says last week, what is intended to harm you, I am going to turn it into good. Yes. Hallelujah. God will turn around, turn around what is intended to kill you, to harm you. Turn around. Do you have anything you want God to turn around? Into good. He comes to kill you. Zoop. Hallelujah. And misses you. Misses you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This simply means for me, God, you'll turn your mess into something amazing. Yes. This woman who committed adultery, God turned her mess into something amazing. Amazing. So your failure, God will turn it into success. Amen. Into success. Amen. Your rejection into acceptancy. Rehabilitation, restoration, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Your financial disaster, God will turn it into success, into fruitfulness this year. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And your disease, I pray that God turns it into healing. Yeah. Healing. Yeah. Healing. Yeah. Healthy living, life in abundance. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus. I know some of us are still in doubt. They may say, brother, this pain, you don't have it. You don't know what you're talking about. Here is what the Bible instructs us in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. God just said, my stuff you don't comprehend. My peace you don't understand. So do not lean on your own understanding because you will not understand me. Just trust me. Trust me. Last week, we read uh, Luke chapter 15. We spoke about the prodigal son. We said that he disrespected his father by asking his share of inheritance before it was due to him. That is terrible. He was literally telling his dad, Dad, your time is behind you. It's my time now. His dad was as good as dead. Amen. He did not care much about his dad. He was telling his dad, give me my money and go to hell. My money. And he got his money that he spent recklessly with all kind of life you can imagine. Hallelujah. But one day, hallelujah, 
One day, he found himself on the ground. He went as far as he could with the money, with everything. He had a check, a heavy check. He took the money. He took the cash. And everyone was behind him. He per probably purchased a very fancy vehicle. Yes. All the women, for a reason that I don't know, they lack those kind of things. <laughs> the things that are flashy. Yes. I respect you ladies. <laughs> it's just something I have noticed. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm the only one who has noticed that. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. And then one day, he had zero penny. The money was gone. The friends were gone. They dropped the stones and they left. He was alone. But he was not with Jesus. He was alone. He became a homeless, sitting on the ground with his box like this, asking for money. Hallelujah. Give me some money. I am hungry. I don't know why they cover themselves. But he was like that. When you pass by, he asks you, give me five bucks. Give me ten bucks. I, I need money for bread. I need something, brother. Brother, can I, can I ask you a penny? Give me a coin, hallelujah. They call it change. Give me some change. Give me, give me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He had nothing. But let me ask you a question. This person was a king. Okay. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Give me money. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Let me tell you, this person who was sitting on the ground was a king. Am I right? Yes. He was, he, he had inheritance. His father was somebody with people working for him. But he was on the ground begging, hallelujah, give me money, give me something, hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, it is not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Let me ask you, what do you think changed? Wasn't it the same person who was from a healthy family that was right there? at the corner of your street, and then begging for change. We see them all the time, and then you wonder what happened to you. It is still the same person. Yes. When God revealed himself to him, he stood up. Brothers and sisters, everything is in us. You just, you just have to tap into one or two or three things that will make you advance. Hallelujah. This person... God touched him. The Bible says he came back to his senses. He came back to what? His senses. That means everything was in him. You have choices in your life. Either I go this way, that way, or this way. When he came back to his senses, he stood up. Boom. Same person who had nothing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know the story. God turned his morning into joy. Yeah. Turn his morning into joy. Amen. I pray that today in this place, hallelujah, for all the people who are desperate from one reason to another, may God turn your morning into joy. Yes. Hallelujah. May God turn your mistakes into miracles. Hallelujah. Amen. Into miracles. Hallelujah. No matter how broken you are, you might be the prodigal son. You might be a divorced mother with probably many children. I'm here to tell you, God will not abandon you. Hallelujah. God will not forsake you. Amen. Amen. God said, I will not test you beyond what you could handle. What you could handle. If you're thinking about ending your life, because it's way too much. But let me tell you, this is proportionate to what your mission is. That person 
You were envying, saying, okay, I don't understand. Nothing happened to these people. It has been 20 years I'm in this situation. Yes, that is proportionate to your mission. Don't envy other people. Hallelujah. God is bringing you somewhere, and what you're going through, God will use up, we use it as a setup to bring you higher. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, we're going to the end here. My children, when they fall, they stand up. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Job stood up. Yes. The prodigal son stood up too. Yes. God is saying this morning, stand up. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Only those who do know me. Only those who have no connection with me, only those who are evil are unable to rise up when they are struck by life. That is what the Bible says. Those who know me and who love me, when they fall, they stand up. Those who do not, me, do not know me, when life comes hard and strikes them, they stay there. Now I'm asking you, do you love him? Do you know him? So stand up then, hallelujah. Do not stay in the same situation. Hallelujah. Do not stay in the same situation. Hallelujah. When you do not know who you are or whose you are, hallelujah, you will stay in the pit. You will stay in the pit. You will even find accommodations when you're in the pit. You will find a way to confuse the pigs so you can steal their food. Because no one want to give you the food, even the food that the pigs eat. Amen? Amen? You will find a way to accommodate yourself with that situation. Because you do not know him. But because you know him, I'm saying stand up. Hallelujah. Oh, mighty God. Stand up, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. You know him. You know who you are. Hallelujah. Do not stay in the pit. Do not find any accommodation. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you. When you know who you are and whose you are, you act like the prodigal son. Yes, you are the corner of the street asking, begging for money. And then because who is in you is greater than who is in the world, all of a sudden you switch off the world. It was too noisy. When you switch it off, and then you hear God saying, send up my brother, send up my son, and then come home. Come home. You act like the prodigal son. Yes, you take some responsibilities. It was not easy for him to go back home because he disrespected his dad. But God this morning is saying, I am in control. As soon as you stand up, God causes the dad to be on the watch because the dad felt my son is coming back. Whoever sees him first can kill him because he disrespected me. They think they are doing a good thing for me. Hallelujah. But that's my son. I love him. He may be a cheerer, a robber, or whatever you want, but I love him. That's the reason the father was first to see the, the, the son who I can imagine had changed. He was big like this. He came home, I mean, bones. But the dad was able to see him and then go to secure him, hallelujah, to embrace him and to welcome him home, hallelujah. Amen. You may think that none of this apply to you because you made so many mistakes and then God cannot for forgive you. I'm here to say you are victorious. Because victory has already been won for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. You have to rise up. You have to refuse the, the lies that you hear from the devil. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You have to refuse that. Yes. God is the only one who has the last word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For those among us who are lost, who are desperate, afflicted, very discouraged, I'm here to tell you this morning the power of resurrection dwells in you. Amen. You may have fallen, you, have, you may have failed, you may have made terrible and costly mistakes, 
You may have been rejected. You are stagnating, and then you have been stagnating for a very long time. Hallelujah. You have been turning around the same mountains. Today you are fiancé. Tomorrow you are free again. The next day you are fiancé, you are free again. Oh, hallelujah. We don't understand what is going on. I pray that the God that we pray, the God that is above everything, turn things around in your advantage. Turn things around in your advantage. Hallelujah. I declare this morning complete, clear, and devastating defeat in the camp of enemies. The enemy came to harm you. I declare him defeated. Hallelujah. Defeated in the name of Jesus. I said this morning, thou was planned to hurt you. God will switch it around. Switch around. Because our God is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, but as well the God of Jacob. Hallelujah. 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 I do not know how God will break the chains. I do not know how he will restore your dignity. I do not know how. Paul said, I don't know how, but I know someone who knows. Hallelujah. I too know someone who knows. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is the only one you can tap into to restore your dignity. Everything that has been lost will be restored in Jesus' name. This morning, Jesus said, I love you. No one can snatch you from my hands. Nobody. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Hallelujah. If you receive this morning, stand up. And let's put our hands together for our Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nobody can snatch you from his hands. Our Lord is powerful and He dwells in you. His Spirit dwells in you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Dear Lord, you showed me this morning that many people are desperate. I saw them on their knees. Hallelujah. Begging for bread. Begging for pennies. Hallelujah. Begging for money. Would you re- reveal yourself in a way you have never done before, Lord? Would you restore this hope? Hallelujah. Dear Lord, I'm asking you to help us learn how to turn off the world so we can listen to your voice. That voice that is saying, come my son, come home. Come my son and receive. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We praise your name this morning and we say thank you. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for restoring our hope. Oh, hallelujah. We magnify your holy name. And we say hallelujah. We say hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. We say amen. We say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.